Hello everyone, this is Grace. It is October the 14th, 2024, and we're going to start our study on clean and unclean foods, or clean and unclean animals. So, we're not going to we're not going to start in Leviticus 11, though. We're going to start at the blessing that goes with keeping this ordinance. So, let's go ahead and get started. And it shall come to pass, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. What we're going to do is we're going to do a comparison. We're going to compare here where he's saying keep the Ten Commandments. And then we're going to compare it to where he says keep the ordinances which is going to include um, the things that are going to make your life better. The Ten Commandments is for you to know God so that you can choose God and save your soul. The ordinances are for your life here for the most part and to show you how to serve God correctly. Okay? So this is the commandments that we're looking at now. So I've read you the first verse. Let's look at what he says is going to happen if you do keep the commandments. The commandments. He says, um, "All these blessings shall come unto thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall the fruit of thy shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy camel, cattle." the increase of thy kind, and the flock of thy sheep. Blessed shall be the basket, thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemy to rise up against thee, to be smitten before thy face, and they shall come out against thee one way, and flee before thee seven ways. He shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, and in all that thou sendest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And it goes on. <laughs> he shall establish thee as a holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. And it goes on and on with the blessings. But then, it tells you, if you disobey, if you disobey, <laughs> Disobedience and disobey are two different words, so I tried to make them into one, but no, it didn't work. <laughs> so, but if it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, and all these curses, then all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. And it goes on and on. And he's telling you all of these curses are going to come upon you. He puts in here his commandments and statutes. I didn't look that up. But um, but the reason why is because you have to have your, you have to be saved. Um, or he's going to discipline you. So you're going to be blessed if you do this. But if you are not, if you don't do them, then you're going to be cursed. Because he wants to bring you back in order. He wants to put you back on the right path, not make life cushy for you and, and, pleasant, and pleasant for you in your sin while you're here on this earth because he knows that this is temporary. Okay, so let's look. Let's go on. We're, so we're looking at a chosen people. And we'll just start off with the first verse. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and has cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Gigashites, Girgashites, and the Amorites and the Kenites, and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater than <laughs> greater and mightier than thou etc etc and when the Lord has delivered them before thee thou shalt smite them we don't need any of that but anyway it starts off he's telling them 
when you go into the land. And he's given them orders. He's given them ordinances that they should do and that they should keep. And he gets down here. And he says, Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. So he includes everything in here. And it says, Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken unto these judgments, which is what is right. Okay, let's keep reading while that's making up its mind. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto shall keep unto thee the covenant a judgment justice justice or an ordinance shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he sware unto thy fathers and he will love thee I highlighted this because this is not in Deuteronomy 28 Deuteronomy 28 is concerned about your soul. He's con not so much, he wants you to be happy, but he's concerned about your soul. So do these commandments so that you can stay on the right path. Okay? But here it says, and he will love thee, and he will bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb, and the fruit of thy land, thy corn, thy wine, and thine oil, and the increase of thy kind, and the flock of thy sheep. In the land which he sware unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. It's not that you're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed above all. And exalted. There shall not be a male or female a barren among you. Or among your cattle. Why? Why can't they be barren? And it, it, because this doesn't have anything to do with their soul. This has to do with their happiness here on earth. That's what these blessings, the ordinances, and the laws of the clean and unclean are about. They're about blessing you here on this earth. Well, they're also about learning how to worship God properly. It teaches you how to worship God properly. And it's also about you preserving your life here so that you can be happy. And the Lord will take away from me. Hold on. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which which thou knowest upon thee. But he will lay them upon all them that hate thee. And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eyes shall have no pity upon them. Neither shall. Okay, I'm not reading very good here. And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eyes shall. I shall have no pity upon them, neither shalt thou serve their gods, for that will be a sneer unto thee. If thou shalt say in thine heart, These nations are more than I, how can I dispossess them? Thou shalt not be afraid of them, but shalt remember what the Lord thy God did to Pharaoh and unto all Egypt. I think that's enough. Let's see what. Yeah, I don't think we're going to read all of this. Yeah, because we just we were concerned about the health part. About the fact that they're not going to be barren, they're going to be happy, things such as that. So, let's go on to the next verse. Because we're really just comparing it. And we're comparing the sentiment behind the words here versus the words in Deuteronomy 28. Because you're still blessed. You're going to be blessed coming out. You're going to be blessed coming in. But it's very specific here. It tells you, no, you're going to be, your, your body's going to be blessed. You're going to have lots of children. You know, you're going to have wealth because the, the ground is going to be healthier. The land is literally healthier when you keep the ordinances. But there was no curse. There was no curse. Because the curse is going to be given by nature. <laughs> if you abuse your body, he don't have to curse you. You're just automatically going to get sick. If you abuse the land, if you murder uh, is abusing the land, by the way, which is part of the that's part of the commandment. So the ground is going to be cursed 
if you don't keep the commandments. But it's also going to be cursed if you're abusive to the land. But the results of being abusive to the land is automatic. It's just automatically done by nature. The results of being cursed by God for murder on your land, it's it's an entirely different it's an entirely different spectrum. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Um, I don't we, I don't think we need that. Well, let's read it because I can't remember if we need this. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Moriah, they could not drink of the waters of Moriah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. Not Moriah, Mara. <laughs> and the people murmured against Moses saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which he had cast into the waters. And the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance. And there he proved them. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right, which is the same word which was in the previous um, scripture, but it was judgment. And it wasn't this number though. It's a different number. The, the number was for judgment. But you're judging right from wrong. You do that which is right. And I think in the previous verses it said that what was right was the commandments and the judgment, the commandments and something else I can't recall. And do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments. It doesn't say keep these commandments or else. It says no. Hearken to the commandments. But it doesn't say keep them or else. It's not. It's not an order. Because you're going to be punished by nature if you don't do these things. He doesn't have to push you. Nature itself is going to, is going to deal with you. Okay? So give ear unto his commandments and keep all his statutes, because that's what it is about. That's what it's about. It's about the statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. And they came to Elam, where were twelve wells of water, and three score and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. I think do we have another? We have one more verse that we're going to look at. Short and sweet today. Where are we? Jacob's dream. Oh, I just wanted to compare it to Jacob's dream. Where he said, if you do this, then... Hold on. Here. This is more compatible. Com this is more compatible to Jacob's dream than it is to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28 was more compatible to was com more compatible to this to Deuteronomy 7 where he's making them a promise if um, if they if they uphold the statutes without threats. So we read the bitter water so let's read what happens to Jacob. And Jacob rose up early in the morning. We're going to start from verse 18. And took the stone that he had put for his pillow. And he set it up for a pillow and poured oil upon it. Upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of, of that city was called Luz at first. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, If God, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way. Oh man, let's start that over. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to the, my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. So, if he will do these things, he's going to be his God. And if he's his God, and this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house, and of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. 
So here, again, this is compatible to the previous verse. God is saying, if you do these things, then you will receive this blessing. And here he's saying, if I receive this, this blessing, I'm going to do these things. If you will give me and watch over me, then I'm going to do these things. There's a sort of synchronicity to it. Um, and it's not the same thing as keeping the Ten Commandments, the ordinance are. Because nature in itself plays a role in these ordinances which are applied to us. Health ordinances. That's why you're blessed if you do them. But God gives you an additional blessing. God watches over you when you do them. Because he wants to bless you. <laughs> he wants an excuse to bless you as his children. But he's not a respecter of person. Anyone that does them is going to receive the blessing. Anyone. Now they can't control the environment around them. Because other people around them are going to be going against God. Okay. But the health blessing can still be there. Okay. Okay. Now it doesn't mean, by the way, and I didn't put this in here. I don't want you to think, because there are scriptures for this. It doesn't mean if you're sick that you're cursed. No. There's many, many reasons for that. Sister White herself said that when she prayed to God, that you know, when she was going to become a prophet, that she didn't want to lose her own soul or become vain or something like that. I can't remember exactly what her prayer was. And the Lord said he's going to keep her humble. By making her, by keeping her sick, basically, and it made it so that she would remain humble. So, I mean, there are circumstances around it. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out. I'm. We may still not go directly into Leviticus 11. It just depends. But this is just a preface to the talk. Um, to the study and I guess we'll just wait and see how we proceed from here alright thank you for listening I will, I will talk with you in the next video